Hey, Study Sync teachers, I'm Catlin, and this is a quick tutorial walking you through how you can take pen and paper grammar practice that's available in Study Sync and create a Google Form lockbox challenge for students who are learning remotely. So if you open up your units and you scroll down, you'll see a bunch of additional resources. And I've opened up the Grammar, Language, and Composition Workbook. So you can see the student-facing side that has the questions normally or the, the practice activity. Activity. And normally I think teachers just make photocopies of this and allow students to practice offline. But when they're learning from home, it's really challenging to see what are their answers to these um, sentence, pra these practice sentences or the practice questions to see how are they doing. So I wanted to create a, a game basically where students would be trying to unlock this Google Form lockbox that also encourages them to check their own answers, which is going to take some of the, the load off of us while we're trying to figure out how to engage kids remotely. And then I also opened up the, the teacher edition of this, so I have the answers for quick reference in case I need to take a look at them. So I'm going to go to my Google Drive and I'm going to click New go down to more and then select Google Forms. And you're gonna see a Google Form pop up that looks something like this. I always give my Google Forms the name of whatever the activity is so that hopefully I can find it really easily in the future and use it again. So I called this subject verb agreement lockbox challenge. I have just a brief little note about what students need to do. And then the first question in the lockbox is just asking for their name. So it's a short answer question. Make sure you click required so they have to enter their names. And then the next one is asking them which period number they're in. So if you're assigning a, the same lockbox challenge to multiple classes, then you want to make sure you're collecting that so you can easily sort them into class in the spreadsheet on the back end of this activity. Once you've collected just the basic information you need from the student, then you start designing your lockbox. So as a student, if you go into preview mode, the very first thing you're going to see is just this section asking for your information. And this is, this is what's exciting about the lockbox or adds that kind of small game component is they have to answer the question on each page, digital page of the lockbox to get to the next one. So once they enter this information, they will see question one in the lockbox. So I'll enter my name click period three, and then when I click next, I'm gonna see that first question. So on the back end, when I'm creating that, to, to make separate pages, you basically hit this add section, these two little lines, and it's, it's essentially a page break. That's how you can think of it. And then you'll have a description window pop up, and I always use the description window to tell them what question number they're on. And then once I have filled in that question number one, I clicked this plus sign, which means add question, and this question box pops up below. I've taken the first sentence from the review activity, I've copied it, I've pasted it here, I select short answer question type. Once I select that, I go down here to click required, and then I hit these three little buttons or these three little dots and I choose or the response validation. And what the response validation does is to help the Google form know whether the student entered the correct answer. So this is how they're going to basically check their own work and get from one question to the next one. So once I click response validation, this line will pop up and I'm gonna wanna choose text then it, it'll say contains, and then I'm gonna put the answer here. So the answer is the word is. So our galaxy's name is the Milky Way. So I put is here, no spaces after. And then right here, there's a space for a custom error code. So if a student actually selected R and put the word R in, they would see this error code, try again. So that's how I created it. So I'm gonna scroll down. You can see I have page or you know section breaks or page breaks, and for each page break, I, the description says the, the name of the, or the question, and then the number of the question, and then I've taken the, the language from the review activity and created a question. So I'm gonna walk through the process just so you can see me doing it. So I finished question number five. I'm gonna hit the two lines to create a new section. So then this one will be called question number six, and you'll see that's all there is, so I need to click this plus sign to add an actual question. And then I'm gonna go back to the review activity. 
I am going to copy the sentence. I'm just going to paste it right into my Google Form lockbox. I'm going to select, oops, let me edit this. I'm going to select short answer and then I'm going to toggle over this required button. I'm going to hit response validation or the three dots and select response validation. I'm going to select text because they're going to be entering a text answer. And then the sentence says we know. So I'm going to put in the word no. Custom error text, oops, is try again. Hmm. All right, and then that's my sixth question. So I'm gonna do it one more time since I hit a little bump on that one. So we'll call this question number seven. Again, we're going to, oh, let me just fix that little spacing issue. Sometimes when you copy and paste from those forms or the, the review activities, you will have a little spacing issue. So just keep an eye out for that so you don't accidentally confuse students. So. I added a new section. I'm going to title it question number seven. I'm going to hit the plus sign. I'm going to go back to my form or back to my review activity. I'm going to copy the sentence. I'm going to put it into, right, copy it right into here. I'm going to remember to click required. I'm going to make this a short answer. I'm going to select response validation. Once this little line pops up, I'm going to select text contains. Um, this is not surprising because there are, so I'm going to put the answer R in here and then try again is my custom error code. So you're going to do that for all of the review sentences here. So it takes a couple of minutes, but I will say the work you put in on the front end of a form so that students can then check their own answers is really, it's a good payoff in terms of time investment. So you're not having to actually a set, look at all the students' worksheets and kind of figure out what they get right, what they get wrong. And then a fun way to end a Google Form lockbox is to add a new section. And I like to title it Congratulations. And then I'm going to add a, an image. And if you like Bitmoji or you have some kind of fun image that's really kind of celebratory, you can attach it here so that when students successfully complete the lockbox, there will be something kind of fun that they see that just, you know, is positive reinforcement. So let's go to the preview section again and just see what this looks like from a student perspective. So our galaxy's name, let's say I put in the word R and I click next. That's where I'm gonna get my error code. So I'm gonna say is next. The Milky Way consists of the sun and other stars. So I'm going to put that in and see how each one I get right takes me to the next page of the Google Form lockbox. And should I put one in, like let me say resemble, that is incorrect, it'll tell me, nope, that's incorrect. And so as a student, I know it has to be resembles. So I'm really being forced to correct my own answers in this. So as a teacher, you're just gonna see the students' responses and the responses are gonna be correct because they couldn't have submitted the Google Form lockbox without them being correct. But this is a way for students to get immediate feedback on their work. So they know exactly which ones they got right, which ones they got wrong. And then when they get towards the end of the Google lockbox, um, they're going to see your kind of congratulatory like ending piece. So that's how you create a Google Form lockbox, give students some fun online grammar review, taking resources that are already there and available for you in StudySync, um, and get them kind of reviewing concepts, practicing grammar, and checking their own work and getting that immediate feedback about whether their answers are correct or incorrect.